All right, guys, here will be our work for lesson 60. Uh, 60A is on factorable trig equations. Uh, as I put here, we're going to be doing similar to regular factoring, where we take x squared minus 1, like a difference of two squares, factor it, and get two answers, one for that, negative 1, and one for that okay. right there. Um, we'll just be having trig instead. So instead of an x, we'll have like sine squared, or cosine squared, tangent squared, whatever it happens to be. So our first example will be solve tangent squared theta minus 1 equals 0. And we are going to have this again because uh, with, with anything involving trig, you're usually going to have some sort of, um, you know, uh, boundaries to it because otherwise you'd have an infinite number of answers because it repeats itself every time you go around a circle. So um, again, this is a difference of two squares. We're going to factor that. So um, just like we did up here with x, this will be uh, the first two parts of my factoring have to equal tangent squared, so that'll be tangent and tangent. The next two have to uh, multiply to be negative 1, so that'll be my 1 and negative 1, because then that way I'll add to 0, just like normal factoring. So then, uh, from there, we set each one of these equal to 0, just like we got our two answers there. So uh, this one, we'd get negative 1. Over here, we get positive 1. For tangent to equal negative 1, okay, we'd have to be in the second or fourth quadrant and it would have to be a 45 degree triangle. So these two answers are the 45 degree angle in quadrant 2 and quadrant 4. And for tangent to equal positive 1, we would need a 45 degree angle in quadrant number 1 and quadrant number 3. So 45 and 225. So we get four answers there. Every, um, all the 45 degree angles. And again, between 0 and 360, we don't have to go any further than that. Other way to do it, um, you could have, you know, gone from here, if you add the one first, square root both sides. Remember when you take the square root of both sides, you have to take the positive and negative answer. So you would still be getting all four. Two answers to get positive one, two answers to get negative one. So you could do factoring or technically you wouldn't even have to because this one you can take the square root. Alright, what about the second one? I'll do this one off to the side so that you can see, but we'll have sine squared minus sine equals zero. Let me see if I can get the cap off this thing here. There we go. Let's do it over here. So we will have sine squared theta minus sine theta equals, and it'll be zero. Again, my answer has to be between zero and 360. Uh, factoring this out, remember the first step in any factoring, take out what they have in common. So I'm going to take sine theta out. And what's left, here there was two of them, and I took one out. So sine theta, and then minus, because I haven't done anything with that. And then that was sine theta, I divided it out. Sine divided by sine would be 1. Okay. If you recall anything with factoring like this problem, we would again take our two factored portions, the sine theta, set that equal to zero, and then the other part, uh, portion that we factored, sine theta minus one, and set that equal to zero. All right, uh, sine theta uh, equals zero. Um, there are two spots for that. So theta will equal zero degrees, because remember, sine um, is gonna be zero degrees right here, because sine is your y value, your up or down. So right there, and also over here on this axis, which is the same thing as saying 180 degrees. So there's two answers for that. This one over here, there's also going to be two answers. We'll add one to this side. Sine theta will equal 1. And there's two answers for that. Remember, sine theta is 1 at positive 1. And, um, or actually, I guess that would be the only answer because at, down here, this sign would be negative 1. So theta here would equal 90, and that is it. So I have three answers for theta. I had 0 degrees over there, 90 degrees over there, and the 180. And there's no other spot that would work. Can you check your answer? Of course. Plug those into the original, and you should get 0. So sine of 0 degrees is 0. Minus sine of 0 is again 0. 0 minus 0 is 0. We've checked it, and it's correct. So uh, there you have that. Um, example number three, do the same thing with tangent. Can you read that? 
I just, for some reason, there we go. Maybe that's a little better. But the example would be, I'll put it over here since we can't read it. Example number three is tangent theta sine theta minus sine theta equals zero. Uh, so in that problem again, step one is take out what they have in common, which is again the sine theta. What's left, if I took sine theta out, tangent would all be the only part left from here. And if I took the sine theta out, there would only be a one left. There. So again, uh, we set each part equal to zero. The first part that we took out, the sine theta, and then the second part, tangent theta minus one because it's the only way to get zero for an answer is if either that part or that part equals zero. So over here, theta, again, we talked about this in the last problem, sine would be zero either at zero or 180 degrees. And uh, here we would add one, and tangent theta can equal one in two spots, and we talked about that in our first example. It'd be positive one in the first quadrant, 45 degree angle, and the third quadrant, 45 degree angle, which is 225. So my four answers for theta are 0, 45, 180, and 225. And again, check your answer by plugging it back into the original, and you should get an answer of 0. That's lesson 60, and um, you can practice on your own. Cosine squared theta equals 1. Try solving that. You should only get two answers, 0 and 180.